So, okay, back to Pilates poses. So I, I thought it would be really fun to explore, and I've been using this a little bit, the Pilates repertoire, if we were going to, what, you know, Pilates has a lot of flow in it, which I love, mm -hmm. but it also has some great places where if you were to stop for a little bit and hold, you could really get a great isometric workout from holding those poses. And I think really beneficial because it'll give time for those positions to really sink into the body and for you to feel, or for me anyway, to feel all, every aspect of that as we're doing it. So every aspect of that particular um, exercise. So that's why I thought of that as a theme. So I don't know if you want me to just take you through some of, like in, in pieces, I could take you through some of the ones and just sort of explain and then see if you guys have any ideas to add in. Would that be good? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So yeah. <laughs> starting from really easy, right, is just laying down. I can do that. And uh, going into that sort of, well, little warm up would be taking a breath in Exhaling, letting the belly drop down, kind of sinking inward. And then belly dropping in, tail curling, coccyx curl. So already I have some things to think about, although this isn't something that I would, was really thinking of. I was thinking about more of the bigger poses. So this would be sort of building up to a bridge hold. But here I have a lot to think about already with the head length the ribs connecting downward and the tail reaching long. And if I cue that here and work my way up, holding here, now I'm holding. And this is one of those places where I think holding for a while does a lot of good. So my cueing here lately has been hug yourself, pull your shoulder blades out from underneath you, and then take your arms back down, relaxed by your side. So that creates for me, a really wide base across the shoulder blades. So I have this really nice wide base, and then I can adjust the back of the neck. So by getting the occiput pulling long, I've got that long now, back of the head long, so reaching the back of the neck. Shoulder blades wide, rib cage. Now I can pull the rib cage in if I want to get those obliques on more. And that makes me want to press upward into the glutes more. So now I've got this more scooped out body. I've got a lot more work happening because I just changed the way I was doing it. And then I can add into that a pull with those heels. And that actually makes my chin tuck a little bit, which is great. Activates more the hamstrings, connect those hips upward shoulder blades wide, back of the neck long, and then I can scan. So head, is it in the right place? Do I need to pull it longer? Ribs in a little more, hips up a little more, heels pull a little more, and scan again. So just so that continuous body scan, what are my ribs doing? What are my hips doing? Where are my knees in alignment? Good. And then one more scan through, so back of the neck, rib cage tail curls, hamstrings on, and then rolling nice and slow all the way back down. So I don't know if you got work from that, but I definitely got work from that already, yeah? So yeah. it's just, it's a kind of, um, and some of the themes I've gotten in the next six weeks, I've gotten away from like specific, I was on specific muscles and now I've gotten onto more of like a theme. So it's not as directed at a, as a muscle, more a whole body idea, but connecting, uh, going through these themes to just sort of teach people to perfect their own form. Because I think that's the life we're living right now is people have to be able to correct themselves. So if we can stop them and show them these positions, then they can take, they can know how to learn how to scan. What are they looking for? Where are the things going that go wrong? So that bridge one is kind of, I think, one of the most fundamental ones for me. 
then we can go to uh, tabletop. So bringing the legs up to tabletop, hands behind the knees is always where I like to go first. And then start playing with this range here. So the back of the neck stretching along again, it's kind of always the case. Shoulder blades wrapping down my back and connecting pressure into the hands with the thighs. So pressing just gently, I'm not pushing to do anything, but just pressing belly sinking downward to meet my spine. Right? That's an ideal tabletop. So here, there's always sort of this pushing away energy. Even if I take my hands away now, I want to keep that energy there and see if you can hold that without creating more tension. So sometimes I'll even come into the 90-90 with the elbows or that cactus arm type position to just see if I can get tension out of the shoulders, stretch the back of the neck, drop the shoulder blades down towards my hips, right? And then holding there, belly sinking inward. And then you could even add the predict the load there, but just the idea is maintaining that is our tabletop. That is our predict the load, right? So just gently, but nothing going anywhere in here, pulling right down, keeping it really, really steady. And if that's too much, because this is a lot of work, I find having the hands behind the whole time would be okay too. So just working it with the hands behind would be okay. Right. And then from there, so that would be another really nice place to work. The other thing or piece is the upper ab curl, right? So supported is where I would go first. So taking the hands, and I always try and cue it with a lengthening of the back of the neck first, and then the rib cage down to come upward, keeping the tailbone down, shoulder blades sliding down the back. Right, so here, now I could just stay here and check through. Back of the neck is long, and as I pull the back of the neck long with my backs of my hands, with the pinkies and the hands, I wanna drop the shoulders down. Then I wanna scan through ribs together, tailbone down, Feet and knees, I actually prefer them to be touching, but not death gripping, right? So some action, but not a lot. And then scan through again, get a little more length, drop the ribs a little bit more, shoulder blades down, shin is dropping because the back of the neck is lifting. And I'm almost giving a tiny bit of pressure back into those hands, but keep the tailbone out, belly down. Rib cage down, back of the neck is long. Hanging out here, I can even connect to that pelvic floor now. So if I want a little inner thigh, pelvic floor lift, belly down, ribs down, neck long, shoulder blades down, right? And then maybe adding little tiny pulses here in the shortened range, but not really going anywhere. Yeah. And then if you wanted to take this across, you could add that rotation component of, of the oblique and do the same, right? Still that same scanning motion right through, back of the neck long, shoulder blade down, rib cage in, tailbone down, and going across, right? And then same thing on the other side. Right, anchoring the pelvis, rib cage down, shoulder blade down, back of the neck is long. Right. And then centering and rolling down. Yeah, so that would be upper ab curl. So we have coccyx curl, we have Predict the load, we have upper ab curl. Then one of my favorites, which uh, I may be too advanced for some people, but I really like it, is hands at the back of the thighs, 
and I'm actually using that this this one this week in my 330 class, my super strong to work up into teasers, but you don't have to work into teasers. You can just work into the imprint. But here, from here, wrapping the shoulders down, pressing the thighs away, coming into that upper ab, kind of half teaser, almost, pressing the legs away, wrapping down, lengthening the back of the neck. So wrapping down, lengthening, that's what I'm using in the float the head part. But this same idea of holding this here, but keeping the neck and head out of it, shoulders wrapping and scanning through this way. And then if you wanted to add a little bit of something, you could add just a foot drop down, right, alternating, um, and then going back up and doing it again. Sorry, I had a little muscle cramp myself in my abs. Oh. Okay. So holding there, right, you could wrap and go with the legs. You could go to extending legs and bending legs, sinking down and extending up. Oh, keep going, don't stop. <laughs> I'm gonna let you keep going, right? So that whole, and then you would scan yourself as you're going, right? So back of the neck is long, shoulder blades down, hand, let thighs pressing into those hands, belly grounded, right? And each time the legs extend, thinking of the head extending with them. So as my legs go up, the back of my neck also grows tall, shoulders down, and I get even taller and bend, and taller and bend, and taller. And then you can progress this as far as you want, right? You could have somebody stay holding tabletop, finding that pose. You could increase that to legs straight, holding that pose. These are our hundreds, right? That's exactly what hundreds are, is this nice isometric pose. So there's um, that build up towards the hundreds. With the flo floating head, which hopefully they're learning this week, then next week that'll make that so much easier. And then one of my absolute favorites is taking the elephant position, which I think is pretty much our version of the downward dog but taking that and moving from that into all kinds of positions because we have that, right? We have, uh, actually we have the equivalent of almost a warrior three from the, if we're doing the push up arabesque, push up down, we have a warrior three in there. We have a one legged plank in there, which is moving from one legged plank. We have the one elephant arabesque we have. So we have all those great poses as well as yoga, we just don't use them on the mat so much and we don't hold them as much. So they don't become as recognized. But so if we were to take, start going onto all fours, we could start that progression from here. One of the ones that I've been working with this week in the float the head is um, floating the knees and holding. So that's our equivalent, like our knee stretch equivalent, holding there. Right, finding the length, hollowing up, holding there, feet working hard, lifting up, bellies up, and then relaxing down. Right, so holding that position, you could simplify that by just um, even holding places like this, where I'm holding here, stretching out, activating that leg, pressing into the floor, holding out here, if that's, not, if that's not enough, lifting upward, holding there. But just having to sustain this and check through the body, belly up, arm long, leg reaching, head reaching, and back down. So other side would be the same, stretching out, straight leg, belly lifting, pressing into the floor, back of the neck stretching, arm out. Shoulder down still, leg up, holding there. Press that floor away. Be light on your knee and hand. Back of the neck long. But keep pressing, holding. And bring it back down. Yeah, so those are great places to start. And then moving up into our elephant 
so dropping heels. Right, elephant is typically weighted on the heels, toes lifted, pressing backward, lifting the belly upward. And our work when we're in this position on the reformer is to get everything aligned properly and then lift the stomach a little bit more. And that's what lightens the feet to allow that inward motion that we're going for. But the posture is very similar. You don't wanna dump in the shoulders. You wanna really try and dig those heels, unweight the toes, press the kneecaps backward. So lift up the quads, pressing the legs straight. Hollow that belly, pushing backwards, holding there, right? So that would be our elephant pose. We could do it on toes, pressing back. That's our u pull. We could do it uh, with one leg straight out or one-legged elephant, or we could point it and reach it up, one leg arabesque. So these are all part of our repertoire um, where we could be working on strengthening with um, just holding postures, finding the connection, aligning the shoulders, head, aligning the foot and hip. But you could pick whichever aspect of it you felt was most relevant. And then we could work our way down into our plank, our holding plank, fixing the posture there. You could have them do it from kneeling plank, holding there, finding that length in the head. You could even have them doing a hovering plank or a hover over the floor, right? And holding there. Aren't you so excited about all these places where you can hold things? <laughs> <laughs> uh, there was one other that I wanted to show you there. Let's see. Oh, right. So then from here, going upward, you can step one foot in more, lift the leg, and find your way up from the arabesque to the push-up, right? So we can go up from there, or we can go down from here, right? So we can go through our Pilates plank. That's it. Yeah, backing up with the arabesque. Or you can go through your whole. Yes, beautiful. <laughs> through your whole hinge back down, right? Holding this, that's our gateway to our actual true Pilates plank. Find the floor and then hold your plank right, or the full version, which is the single or the single legged version, which is what we were just working on in that arabesque, but holding on the way, right? Reaching long, holding there, lifting up and coming up. We also have that in our lat pull arabesque, right? Mm -hmm. and our seesaw of the lat pull arabesque or our warrior that we do on the chair. Those are all connected here right, and pulling. So we could work here if we wanted to as well. So that's basically what I have in my head when I think about Pilates poses or different positions. And you can think about, creatively think about the whole repertoire and find places where, wow, it wouldn't be so bad to stay here. Uh, the other day I also did the kind of the split series on the mat from the reformer, the Russian split series, where I had them find their square pelvis lunge back, holding it there, and then pressing back and bending, right, pressing back. And granted, we're not sliding back. I am coming up. But it was a really nice way to teach squeezing the inner thighs and keeping the chest up and working through this uh, motion that we use on the reformer. We're a little different, but then trying to straighten both legs and hold, right? Anchoring or he heel up is the way we do it because we have our foot at the shoulder rest, right? But that's a really valid posture for us. And then bending in, or you could work on hinging front and bringing it up. That's, piece of, that's a piece of that exercise as well. And up, it's a lot of work to get that, a lot of stretch. So a lot of good 
I think we can get from these, uh, from taking these apart and just holding them for a while, giving people a chance to feel them, to recognize them. And then hopefully when they're passing through, they'll go, oh yeah, we spent time on that lunge position. Whenever I come here, even if we're talking about arms now, whenever I come here, I know I'm going to arrange myself in a certain way and check on a few things in my body before I go on with the arm work, because now I'm familiar with this, this actual position that I'm base, my base position. And that would be great is if we can give them a whole repertoire of really strong base positions then when they go to do a class or something, they know how to fix themselves a lot, or they know what to check it. At least they have that sort of check scan going on in their head. Yeah. What do you think, Kim? What do I think? Oh, I'm, yeah, no, it's good. I, I'm holding the positions longer. It's definitely hard. Bridges, all that, very good. I think it's good. and. Um, I've been trying to get people, not so much in the classes, because I'm just teaching the one class right now, but um, with the privates, just to slow down, <laughs> you know, so yes. this might be a good, like, pull it really all the way back to stop, check, stop, don't just, you know, beyond slowing down. Yes. Yeah, I agree. I think, I think it's, I think people rush through a lot, especially people who just feel like I'm coming in to get it done. Those people who are always on a mission, which yeah. I, I'm always on a mission myself. Yeah. Too, but yeah. it's really good to not see. you. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi, 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 guys. Sorry I'm late. Yes, but getting people to really slow down and rethink where they are in space. I think is really a great key. So that's, that's the intention of the Pilates poses. Um, I also feel like, and I think Kim, you and I have talked about this in the past about how, how do you heat up a body or get it really. Uh, and in my days training, circus training, the warm up thing that I would do, because we didn't have, a lot of times we'd be shoved downstairs in the basement with this little room to warm up in. And then we had to go do this whole, I had to go do this whole, crazy circus act, right? Climbing things. And I mean, my, my whole performance was six minutes long, but the prep for that was an hour and a half for me, for my body to be ready. It was like between an hour and hour and a half to get ready for that. But I had a little tiny room, so I couldn't exactly run around and heat up my body. So what I would do is actually handstand. I would just go into a handstand and stay there until my body started to really warm up. And then I would do planks. And then I would do a little abs and then I would start backbending, like active backbending, so strength. And that's how I would warm up my body. So I think, um, granted, we're not going to have everybody handstanding in this class, but, but planking or holding a bridge or finding a, you know, even a, like a side kneeling posture here, this, if, even if it's modified like this, you're taking there's a lot of work happening in this. Mm -hmm. I could spend time here wrapping this hip underneath, extending through that leg, wrapping the shoulder, open the chest. And I had them today grabbing the back of their neck, pressing long through the back of the neck to stretch the neck long and line the body better in that back line of the body. Take the arm up, right? And then, so even this, if I just sustain this, I'm creating some heat there in my body. So I think um, it's a great way in the beginning of any class to take a few or in the middle of a class if you really want to create more heat in the body or get uh, their temperature just rising and they're ready for the next thing. It's a great way to also do it. So yeah, do you guys have any that come to mind for you? Um, I think I've been <clears throat> kind of working on this split kneeling lunge a little bit, sort of that kind of what you were doing earlier, just on the knee. Uh -huh. um, and I know that we've been doing a lot of the arm work there with the band under the foot. Yes. So I'll, I'll go into that, but I'll, I've been pausing lately and making people get actually square in their hips and everything. You know, I'll be like, okay, this is arms, but first let's get all of this arranged properly. Um, 
And then sometimes I'll go into a stretch from there and I'll let them kind of stretch out the hip and then come back and do the arm work or even do the arm work and the stretch. Um, and then <laughs> a lot of times I have them test where they are by like hovering. Yeah. And, and people hate that, but um, <laughs> it's really revealing, I think, if they're, oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they're in place or not. Um, and I, I do, I spend a while there and like, okay, hey, let's explore this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I, I think that's, yeah, and I, I think I've also been the, the bridge plank, like, or not bridge plank, but holding the bridge for a while. Mm -hmm. Something, I don't know, I've just sort of intuitively started doing for people and holding, probably not as long as, as you would like to hold, but <laughs> <laughs> something that I have been doing lately. Um, and it's, it's true. It like really warms you up really quickly. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, but other poses. Oh, um, oh, go ahead. Well, you, I, I like the way you guys were talking about poses and getting in warming up through, I guess, basically you're waking up all your muscles, even though you're not, and I'm used to, I guess, warm ups doing well, ballet, but you know, which is, which is movement, maybe soft movement, certainly not full force running or something. But from what I'm hearing, it's more of where the poses like that, Zena, when you were doing the side, uh, I won't say the name of it because I forgot it, but you're really turning on those muscles, right? And so it's not something that, it, I'm not thinking cardio, I'm thinking getting that working, although I'm sure that that is, but poses are equally effective is, I guess, what I'm hearing. They're a little different. I mean, the first part we were just talking about why I do it, but uh, as, a, as even a way to slow down enough to correct and get the most benefit out of the exercise or to understand where your body is and for people to be able to self-check uh -huh. going forward. So uh -huh. if they can know how to scan through their body and what they're looking for, if you hang out there and pe make people scan through and keep repeating what they're supposed yes. to be scanning, then they start going, oh, wait, she said head three times. Oh, I didn't realize my head was, my chin was going up. I should be looking down, you know? It takes that mm -hmm. repetition. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, I feel like Pilates, Matt Pilates gets shafted a lot because, I don't know, I think because people don't teach it effectively, really, and because people mm -hmm. want equipment when they do Pilates, they want yoga when they do the mat, but we have so many of those same similar poses in our repertoire that they do in yoga. We just mm -hmm. don't pull them out and tease them out in the same way because mm -hmm. we want more flow. But mm -hmm. I think there's a time and a place to, to freeze and fix and connect and give them a base to work from. And then they can also be much more effective with correcting themselves. So mm -hmm. that's sort of what we're after as well. I, that's the most, I mean, that is what to me it draws me to what you're doing is because it's about the form and yeah. getting it correct. Yes. And that's been all the difference in the world. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So the other part, I don't know if Kim, did you have something to add? I, I did have a couple. Uh, Yay. Go. Um, so because I've been teaching the bone strengthening class, I've been um, not always, but I have been doing more squats and lunges thinking functionally, right? Trying to teach or talk through how to pick something up off the floor, which, you know, we keep hearing that our whole life. You work with your legs, not your back. So I've been doing more squats. So that definitely warms the room up or warms them up. Um, and the other thing is about the lunges. So um, this past week, I, or I think a week or two ago, I did lunges in my class. And I actually told them if they wanted to put shoes on, that it was okay because I had to wear shoes to do lunges mm -hmm. because I have arthritis in my toes. So even my coming around to the question of, well, first of all, for you guys to re realize that you may have people in your classes for which lunges are hard because they can't bend their toes very well. Mm -hmm. Right. So trying to, I've been trying to think of modifications like when we were doing 
doing TRX, putting your foot on something, yeah. that is really hard, of course, but it takes all that pressure off the toes. But in the mat classes, what to use, what to tell people to use to take that pressure off their toes. Okay, so that was my question. Okay. Right. Okay, if they've got something, and I could get a yoga block, yeah. Yeah, a block down would help. I'm sorry, I'm sort of out of the view. Let me get you. No, 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 I, I saw, well, I saw you anyway. Yeah, so I could put the ankle there. Getting, getting the self situated is a little bit harder figuring out the right distance yeah but then well, once you're there the roller for balance because we're talking about yeah you know a, a multiple levels in the class including yes myself. the roller i agree roller for balance is great i guess you could put anything like a you could do put a pillow no Maybe. i think it has to be a little bit firm it is hard to get the right distance though yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I don't have the right distance anymore. I'm too close. Okay. I'll play with it. Play with it. I think what I would, let me think what I would say to them would be maybe, uh, maybe find a comfortable distance and I've got that right behind me, take a little step back and then I've, I should be able to take that, oops, back and put it underneath me and be pretty close. And maybe I'm the, you know, I'm probably not the only one that has this problem, but. I, I am sure you're not the only one. <laughs> I wonder if, um, that's really hard. Yeah, I don't like I don't like this because this is really stressful on the knee. I was trying to think. Yeah, of it's really hard to get the 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 distance. I think. How about just single legged squats? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that could be the goal. Yeah. But yeah, having that behind just to, but keeping something the work forward. Yeah. I used to do it at the gym at like a thousand years ago, right? With my foot on the bench. Right. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, I, I something like that. Chair, but a chair also. might be too high. Well, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to play with it. Mm hmm. And the, you know, the reason I've been doing lunges is because it's kind of functional too, right? If they- It's very functional. Off, going back to needing to get up off the floor. Yeah. Yeah, it's very functional. So anyway, that was my question and the way I've been warming people up with squats and various types of modified lunges. You could, you know, potentially, I've just got my foot off the mat and the back of my foot on, I, and I have yeah, a like I, the one inch mat. And yeah. even that, if I dig the heel in and stick my butt out on this side, I can come up a little and down and down. I don't know if that feels terrible on the back of the foot. Um. Because it, what made me think of that is you going back to the functional, when yeah. I teach people to get up off the floor, I tell them to tuck the toes under and push with both feet. But if right. you can't tuck your toes under, what do you do? It's still good to push with both feet and then come to feet together. And that would be pushing the back of the foot then. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll play with it a little. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oof, tired now. Yes, it's a lot of lunging. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That was my comment. Okay, the one other place where I think it's really good to work and hold is uh, 
prone. You knew this was coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I really like, I used to always go just automatically forehead on the hands. And I've actually gotten away from that. And I think part of it, surprisingly, was because of the headpiece that we're wearing now when we're teaching the classes all the time. I didn't want to have that on the ground, but I realized later that it actually wouldn't have been on the ground anyway. So, But it gave me a little insight into just hovering the head and what that does. And hovering it, and I know I've shown you this before, my favorite little sphinx position coming up and then hovering down, but also at this wide elbow, pulling the shoulder blades down and growing the neck long. So much like what we want on the long box. So I could come to this holding here, stretching long. Then if I could keep that length, I could actually come up with the arms holding long. And I haven't really lifted here at all. Then I'm correcting through, right? Back of the neck long, shoulder blades on, pubic bone down, tail long. And I can progress this any way I want, hands behind, wrap the shoulders reaching, chest coming up a little more, holding there. I could add feet coming up, pubic bone long, not dumping in my low back, or reaching there, holding that. I could progress it to there, holding, right? And moving through. So there's a lot of, you could do your T pulls, you could do your elbow pulls, you could do A pulls, wraps. You know, there's so many great places there to work on that length and extension as well. With that, Zena, can, can you, can that really help because I have the head forward posture, or head forward, can that really help to correct, correct that? Can what, all the extra length? What you're doing, the floating, the floating head, yeah. Yes, really I think okay. so. Okay, that's, that's what we're doing it for, okay, all right. So yeah. anytime with that prone that you're working to Masto. activate the neck flexors and stretch the back extensors. That's exactly what we need. Is that hey. neck flexion back, back of the neck extension. And the shoulders away from that. The shoulders yeah. up here is where we end up. Right? The shoulders have to go away and then I can stretch up in the back of the head and grow that really tall. I'm very invested in being long and tall since my children are now trying to pass me. About, <laughs> I've got a competition going with my 12 year old now that I have a feeling by the time I see him next in three weeks, he'll be taller than I am. Oh, so I'm trying yeah. to stretch up, you know, keep, keep up there. <laughs> he, he's gotten <laughs> really tall. Dave's gotten really tall too. He yeah. got really tall. He was, I mean, we were just here when he left, just there. So I have a feeling that um, yeah. he might in these weeks away actually pass you by. Up, huh? Pass you by. So I've got to be tall and long. <laughs> Thus, lengthening is one of my main <laughs> goals. Yeah. One question, Zena, uh, talking about the floating head and the um, neck flexors. Um, I know we talked a while ago about the, with the mat, having the little space in the, with the, the thicker mat where you can do the hover. Yes. And the supine. So I actually experimented with that on the roller today. Um, do you think that's a good way to do it? Yeah, I mean, it's so, I think it's great. It, it probably is a little easier for people to understand than sliding off the mat. Um, yeah, just because most people's mats at home are, you know, these little... Thin, floppy <laughs> things, yeah. I think so. It's just a super hard exercise and um, people can get a little sore from it. So I would just, I think it's a great hold for like a few seconds and then come down and then a few seconds and come down. Um, yeah. What, what was on the roller? Did they slide off the roller or? Yeah. So it was a little awkward because it's, you know, it's not as slippery as the mats are, okay. um, but it was, you know, I had them kind of wiggle themselves up to where they were just barely on the roller and then just slide a little further and hold themselves up there. 
Oh, okay. And then back. And then again. And, you know, I kind of cued them to use their hands if they couldn't find it at first and then just hold it there. Yeah. Um, it felt a little clunky, but it was my trying to work around what people had. <laughs> I think it's a great exercise. It, that exercise always is a little clunky, yeah. I think. We used to drop the head of the table out from under them or hold their head, somebody mm -hmm. holding their head and them already off the edge and then just start to take away the hands and have them just hold the head steady. So it is a harder one to do all by yourself. So I think that's a really great idea, yeah. And I think with the setup of being on the roller, the posture on the roller already there, I think that's mm -hmm. really uh, really helpful. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. I, I hope that was productive for you. Um, I'll, um, and then if you, again, if you want the feedback, I've been getting pretty good feedback. I was telling Kim that Mimi was saying that they, she really likes the themed weeks mm -hmm. or just gives some focus or so, um, and then I got the comment uh, about Genevieve's class today too. So uh, it, she said it sounds, it feels like a little more cohesive and that, you know, you know what you're working on and it's not that you're not working on anything else during that week, but it just gives you something to really think about. So I'll keep, I'm um, now send you guys the six weeks of themes um, and then we can always use this time, you know, divide it up. If there's other things we want to talk about, I'm absolutely fine, but we have a, a topic that we can hit on each time mm -hmm. if we want to. And then um, yeah, if you're interested in carrying those themes in your classes, go for it. There's by no means do you have to, but um, I think it just maybe would, especially since things have gotten so repetitive with COVID so long, yeah. it may be kind of inspiring for people to have something, another way to look at things. So now, yeah. um, Dana, is uh, somebody sending out Facebook messages or something to remind the instructors about this class? Yeah, and you know, I don't know why we're not getting more traction on it. I mean, I haven't seen any. I don't go to Facebook very much, but today I went to go find the meeting ID again and uh, it wasn't popping up for me. So, oh, uh, okay. Uh, you know, I don't know if um, Laith was asking me for the themes, so I know that he's posting them on Instagram, but maybe we need to do a little more with uh, the yeah. Facebook outreach. Yeah, so, some uh, people, some, you know, I, I think for me, if I, if I go to Facebook um, or versus, I usually, I'll tend to go to Facebook versus the Instagram, so that might be an idea. I know. I don't it's, know. You, it's you, it's a Facebook all. group, so it right, is on right. somewhere. But maybe but just updated continual updates will will generate. Um, if if you're subscribed to it, will generate a pop up for the person, and they might it might put, pique their interest. Does that make sense? So if I'm I'm subscribed, it's going to boom new topic for Pilates this week. Right. And I hate I hate to be the old fashioned person, but. If he if they put something up and I can get to it, I can send an email around to at least our group of instructors, including Lisa and Kate, and you know the um, instructors in training. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I would I, I don't mind doing that. I just need to know, um, be you know cohesive with what's going on on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Yeah, I will mention that. Or maybe if you remember, will you send an email to Tits and tell him that you want to do that? Okay. And so that I way. Need it, I need to get whatever they're going to put on Instagram by what, what day is today? So, you know, Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Wednesday would be good. <laughs> Wednesday. Because we might be losing, like Allison was coming and now she's not. Um, she might have other things, but just, just want to throw it out there. Yeah, no, that'd be great. Okay. Yeah, and we can, yeah, you know who else? I had other instructors. I should look back at all my, all my instructors that have ever come through here and maybe yeah. generate a list. Yeah, Kate and, and the previous group and. Um, right, Kate, where's Kate these days? And well, there's Allegra, but she's on vacation. So yeah, that group. Yeah. Would you like, would you like uh, what about a list of, um, from other studios? Is that, yeah, of course, right? I mean, 
Yes, it's been okay. Okay, then let's get it. Yeah, then I then then I'm, we've been okay, doing it let's... on Facebook and I guess Instagram, but I don't see anything wrong with sending an email out too. I agree. I don't. I don't do this anymore with calling. I'm even old fashioned like that. I always think engagement, like you know, doing doing that gets them on. Yeah, I, I do. I, I that's what I found in, in my sales career. Just you know, either in person or phone call. And yeah, Lisa, if you want to reach out to whoever you know, that would be amazing. That's what I was. Well, yeah, of course. That's what I was. I was thinking. Um, to get, get the list okay. and do that, and then they can also pass. You know, just jet, we've got to get awareness out there. I think that, yep. you know, that this is being offered. And maybe and we need to just put a reminder in every Wednesday and send it out to all the instructors we know. And they can yep. opt out of it if they don't want the reminders, but. Okay. Yeah. I finally moved and settled. So let's, let's, yeah, let's jump. Let's get, let's get this going. I'm, this is a valuable thing that, that people should be, um, I'd be real. I mean, obviously I am interested in it, but to get your feedback and have Kim there and all you guys. So. Yep. Um, the only thing is, uh, I also wrote on that spreadsheet, October 8th is the day I'm actually traveling. Uh, so I won't uh, be that day. Sorry, no flights that day. <laughs> no, we'll try it. So, uh, um, and I, I was actually, you're going to laugh, I was actually looking to see what time my flight is to see if I could squeeze this in somewhere at the airport oh, or anything, just at least be on. Like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Okay. I'll actually okay. be on the plane. My flight leaves at 105. So yeah. I actually cannot do it <laughs> on that Thursday. So no we could, that day. you no. guys could maybe rally and just host it yourselves or do it. One of you hosting it um, yeah. would be yeah. great so that it goes even if I'm not there that week. Yeah, um, and you can talk idea. about how much you don't like me that whole right. time, and I'll ne I promise I'll never log on to Facebook and look at it. Stop. So you could really just say whatever you want. I think that's a good way to just going forward. Yeah. Zena, God knows you're going to be, God willing, as as you expand rapidly. Um, Kim, you know, Kim as a facilitator certainly it would be great, and that should we should have that. Yeah. We should we should go forward anyway, right? Yes, go forward without yeah, me. All of us. Yeah. No, no, no. I'm not just saying. Any of us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, ladies, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. I'll see you soon. Yep. I'll send Very. you links for uh, camera stuff. That I would love that. Thank you so much. Yeah. No yeah. Okay. <laughs> see y'all later. All right. See you guys later. Bye, guys. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.